Hello, all children. How are you all? Today, I'm so excited uh, to introduce to you all. Uh, this is none other than Nikhil Gullapalli, our beloved Saroja Madam's uh, son. So, I'll give you more details about uh, Nikhil, sir. Nikhil Gullapalli is Managing Director of Global Impact Partners and advises mm -hmm. corporates and governments around the world on developing projects that not only generate profits, but also helps solve the most pressing global issues from health to environment. Nikhil has always believed that the pursuit of business and spiritual goals are not mutually exclusive. Having been introduced to meditation around the age of eight, Nikhil believes this played a crucial role in his early development and laid foundations for his academic and professional success and helped him live a balanced and purposeful life. He is passionate about empowering individuals, businesses and communities to reach their full potential and live with purpose. For this purpose, Nikhil conducts mindfulness and self-empowerment workshops globally for businesses the community and students. Thank you, Nikhil, sir, for accepting to uh, teach uh, our students. Uh, I will hand you to our team now. Thank so you, sir. You break, Thanks, Agatha. Thanks very much for that kind introduction. Hi, everyone. Pleasure to be with you today and have the opportunity to share some of my experiences and some of my wisdom um, with you all today. I'm quite excited. Just want to say hello to everybody on the other stream as well. Thanks for joining. Very much appreciate all your time. As Gangadhar mentioned, um, my name is Nikhil. I am Saroja's son. I'm also, um, as you mentioned, uh, quite involved in entrepreneurship and business. And today, what I really want to talk to you about is a little bit about my journey, how we can live a balanced life, and how we can actually build a manifest the life that we want. Because really at the end of the day, that's what spirituality to me is all about. Creating that union between what we consider our ordinary life um, as material life and helping enhance that and fulfill quite a peaceful, happy and content existence. So a bit of background on myself. Um, as Gangadhar was mentioning, I started meditation at a very, very young age. In fact, um, I should just share my screen as well so I can share a presentation along with this. Has that popped up onto the screen? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. I started meditation at a very uh, young age, about around seven or eight from what I recall. Um, much like many of you here also at a quite a prime young age. Uh, that's why I'm quite excited to speak with you all today because I know the value of experiencing and uncovering this beautiful part of life at that tender age where it still has the opportunity to transform so much of who you are, who you become, how you live your, your life. In fact, I'm could I just get a quick response in the chat? Um, as we go through this, I want to try and make this as interactive as possible. So feel free to put questions, uh, responses in the chat. I'll try and read it as we go along. We'll also have a Q&A session at the end of this. But I would just like to start with, if everybody could just post uh, their age and the country they're from in the chat, I'd be interested to know where we all are and what part of life we're currently in. Thanks, Harshini. Thanks, guys. For
just give a brief moment for everyone else to also respond. Great, it looks like we've got a good mix of people, a um, few different countries across here and a range of age groups from all, you know, 11 all the way through to 17. Um, I'm hoping a lot of what I was gonna say is actually gonna be quite relevant to a lot of you um, who are in that high school phase, which I think is quite a transformational phase in anybody's life. Uh, as I was mentioning in this session earlier today, really by the time you hit you know, 18 to 20, a lot of who you are as a person, the values that you have, the direction you want to start taking your life in, do start becoming cemented. You know, while the smaller mechanical pieces like the job and the degree might still be up in the air, you'll find that a lot of people, once they reach that age, the things that really matter in terms of your value system and your character are quite developed at that point. So really the age that all of you guys are in here today, um, are in that point where if, if you do harness and you do start to unlock your true potential, you're actually going to reap immense benefits as you go through this transition period. For me, spirituality and meditation was immensely beneficial uh, for my academic life um, in terms of building up my confidence, helping me realize that I can actually do anything that I want to do with my life, which is such a liberating feeling. Because I feel each of us, you know, when we go through life, whether it's school and then after school, finding a, a college and et cetera, we often feel constrained. Like I don't have options in life or, you know, what am I gonna do at this point? I'm finishing up this year. Um, you know, maybe even while you're in school, you have to pick subjects and courses for the next year. And at each point in our junction, it feels like the world is closing in on us often and our options are reducing. And the more you realize the unlimited potential that you have within yourself, you actually start to realize the opposite, that, you know, these options never reduce and you can start creating any reality you want. And the more you implement that, the more you see those dividends, the more that you're actually going to be able to live a happy and fulfilled life. So for me, I think the two areas that I most started seeing those benefits is firstly in my overall happiness and confidence. Once I started realizing that divinity that I have, it becomes a case of you know, the small worries and the anxieties that we face as we're going through school start becoming a lot less worrying than they were a moment because you can start putting them into perspective. You start realizing, you know, that homework assignment that's due or that test that I didn't do so well on or the fact that I wasn't invited to somebody's party on the weekend. Things that probably, you know, would cause quite concern or upsetness at the time slowly become less and less impactful and allow you to live a happier, more fulfilling life. I know with my own academic journey as well, I was able to utilize the benefits of meditation, of mindfulness to help what I call study smart, not hard. And the idea behind that was life is about many things. It's not about any one sphere. And I want to be able to experience and enjoy each of those spheres. So in order to do that, I was able to utilize meditation, mindfulness to improve the amount of time, you know, that I actually had to spend so to the point where I remember I was only spending like three or four hours a week at most, you know, actually studying. Um, but yet that was often quite enough to actually do quite well. And I want to talk to you today about, you know, it doesn't have to be academics. It doesn't have to be sports. It could be anything. But how do we start bringing to our life the things that we want? How do we live that happy, uh, you know, peaceful, satisfied life? So with that, um, once I started experiencing a lot of these smaller steps, I very quickly wanted to share that with more and more people and share these little bits of wisdom that had transformed my own life. You know, you have that connection with others and you want them to start seeing the same thing too. 
so before we had Beyond Your Mind Foundation, a uh, long time ago, we created Empower One. And Empower One was about those two keywords, which is empowering individuals and organizations to become the best version of themselves. Because as you unlock that latent self energy and you start manifesting that on a daily basis, you start creating miracles around you. It raises the vibrations. It raises the level of existence, not just for yourself, but anybody who is blessed to be around you and experience that too. It inspires them to go a little bit further with their own existence. And then the second part was about one, oneness. You know, I'm a strong believer that as each of us start uncovering our own true potential, we should then all come together like we are here in this group and even beyond this group, connect with other people to share that miracles, to share that wisdom. Because as we continue to uncover our own greatness and we can connect with other like-minded people, together we're going to be able to have a much greater effect to drive positive change in the world. So with that, I'd love to dive straight into today's session. So I want to put a few questions out to you guys. And before we start talking about you know, today's topic, I think it's important that we start defining a few terms that we often throw around in the context of these discussions. You know, often people use these words without much understanding, either because they don't understand or maybe simply because they've never even stopped to ask. What, like we think we know what these things mean, but until you have to explain it to somebody else, you don't realize, hey, my understanding of that is actually not as clear as I thought it was. And I don't think there's any right or wrong answers for these, but it's important we do spend the time answering some of these questions so we can put some guardrails in around what we're actually pursuing. So I invite each of you in the chat to actually put your responses for each of these questions that we go through. I'm interested to hear what do you think each one of these things are and what do they mean to you? So the first one is spirituality. So when we use the word spirituality or when you use the word spirituality, what do you mean by that? What do you think it means? Can we get some responses in the chat? Thanks, Trihad. Can we get everybody who's here today to try and give some response? Remember, there's no, no bad or good. No one's judging you here. It's a very open forum. Thanks, Harshini. Lovely response. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Lolly. Lovely. Then May as well. Connection between us and the spirit. Lovely. We have almost 35 people in this group. I want almost 35 responses. Thanks guys, lovely. As I said, it's a nice open forum and the more you engage, the more we're gonna be able to get out of today's session. my lovely and opening of the heart is an essential aspect of true spirituality i agree it's beautiful okay the second question i want to put to you guys is what is enlightenment many of you might have heard this word before thrown around what does that mean to you when you hear people say the word enlightenment what does that mean Connecting to your mind or our body and yourself. Thanks, Ryan. 
Shruti knowledge about something. Harshini again, thanks to show your true self, lovely. Lovely, very poetic, rising from the dark, reaching for the light, love it. <laughs> Nikita, in state of knowledge, beautiful. And the last one, what is the purpose of life? From your perspective, what do you see as the purpose of life? When you hear people talk about the purpose of life, what does that mean to you? Thanks, Harshini. Thanks, Trigita. Thanks, Gayatri. Beautiful. Thanks, Yaj, to fulfill what we are sent to do on this earth. Lovely. Ryan, a chance to show who you are. Great responses, guys. My three, I'd love to do that with you as well. Beautiful responses, guys. So I'd love to share my perspective on each of these. And as I mentioned, each one of your answers are beautiful and correct. You know, there is no definitive version. Why I start the session with this is unless we start to ask ourselves these questions, we don't know why we're doing what we're doing. Each of these three key words are quite interrelated from the way I see them. So for me, spirituality is all about the journey that we're on together. It's the journey of uncovering who we are, uncovering our true potential of going within. Spirituality occurs in many forms of life. Often many people are walking a spiritual path without even consciously realizing or even, even knowing what the word spirituality is because from a quite a young age, I've met so many people in my journey, in fact, who I would say live a spiritual life but they didn't even know what the word spirituality was. And why I say they lived a spiritual life is they were constantly trying to uncover more about who they are. They were asking people, they were reading books. They were going within, spending time with clearing their heads. This whole journey of uncovering who you are, whether you know the word or you don't know the word, that is what spirituality is. It's about uncovering who you truly are. Enlightenment to me, is all about expanding the awareness of your true self. So not the self as in this physical body, but what is the real consciousness that you are behind all this? And it's the process. A lot of people describe it as if that person is enlightened, he's reached enlightenment. And I think while in movies, et cetera, that might be great to describe it. <coughs> it might be great to describe it like that. But enlightenment's a process. Everybody's enlightened to some degree. In fact, today, you're more enlightened than you were yesterday. Tomorrow, you'll be more enlightened than you were today. Enlightenment is that process of constantly expanding our awareness. And as we expand our awareness of understanding of self, it expands just a little more and a little more and a little more. The analogy I always give when we talk about enlightenment is when you're born as a child in this world, the moment you're born, you're still trying to make sense of the physical world that you're in. You don't realize that you have a family. You're just this singular baby. And all you realize is yourself. You're still realizing that you have hands and you have feet. And then slowly after a period of time, that, expand, that awareness expands. And you realize, hey, I actually have a mother and a father. I have a brother or a sister. So your awareness of self goes from I to my family. 
And then as time goes on again, you realize you're not just a family, you're part of a community, you're part of a school, a cricket club, you could be part of a music band, you're all part of a country. And our identity in terms of who we are, what is, who is this person, who is Nikhil, expands a bit further. And as we continue to expand our awareness, we start to go from the I to bigger and bigger pools of consciousness, from a family to a country, etc., where you start realizing that we're all interconnected. We are all the same universal consciousness. And that process of expanding that awareness and realizing the true self and part of that process is how powerful and how unlimited you are. And that's part of what we want to focus on today, helping you uncover that hidden powers within yourself, that power to create those realities you want. All of that is a part of enlightenment because you're realizing the capabilities that you have. And lastly, the purpose of life for me is all about experience. You know, the reason we're all here on this plane is because this is the plane that we can have experience on. And if enlightenment, as we talked about, is the process of expanding our awareness, the way we expand that awareness is through experience. You know, sometimes in life we go, that was a good experience, that was a bad experience. But the reality is, for the soul, everything is an experience. There is no good or bad. Because each experience, whether we think of them as good or bad, help us uncover a little bit more about ourselves and the world around us. And remember, the world is us, right? We are that consciousness fulfilling through everyone and everything. So the more we uncover about anything, whether it's ourselves, the world, something else, we're actually learning more about ourselves in the process. So really, it's up to you to figure out in terms of the materialistic world, what do you want to do with your life? Because there is no wrong or right path. As long as you're doing something, you're moving forward, you're trying new experiences, you're constantly nourishing that soul with new and new journeys. And there's two ways experience can really happen. One is through direct experience which is that you have to go and experience everything yourself and your experience informs your awareness. The other is through learning through others, through the experiences of others. And it works very simply in the sense of, imagine if somebody picks up a chili and it's a very spicy chili and you've never seen a chili before. One way you can learn that's a very spicy chili is if you pick up that chili, you put it in your mouth and you start burning your mouth. Next time you'll be like, that's spicy. I should be careful. So that's direct experience. But you could also learn from the experience of another. And in fact, I would suggest in many ways, that is quite many ways, the quicker and potentially safer way to actually learn. If you let your friend go first, let him burn his mouth. And then you're like, ah, okay, that's a spicy chili. I know, I don't, without having to eat it and go through that experience, I know what the outcome of that experience is. And that's really what we're here today and throughout these workshops to be doing, which is throughout your life, you're going to have many experiences that's going to help inform who you are. But at yeah. the same time, by reading books, <laughs> by speaking <laughs> to other people. <laughs> Sorry, was somebody asking a question? by reading books, by speaking to other people, by connecting with more and more like-minded people, you're going to be able to learn at a much more accelerated rate through the experiences of people around you. And if you combine that with your own journey and, and conscious, the more present you are, that to me, the combination of these three things is what we're here to do. We're here for that journey within. We're here to have multiple experiences to help us expand our awareness of self. So I want to turn now to finding balance. And this is the, thing, the most important thing to keep in mind. 
It's often referred to as walking the middle path. And the reason for that is spirituality and this spiritual journey that we're on isn't something that exists outside of your life. You shouldn't be seeing it as, you know, I go to school and that's one part of my life. And then on the weekends, I spend some time meditating. I come to these workshops and that's another part of my life. Because the reality is, if you're living your life and you're taking on that wisdom to its fullest, these two things should be incorporated together. How? How are they incorporated together? The way that you want to start maximizing the wisdom that you have is by applying it in the real world. And the reason I say that is a lot of people don't often understand why they're doing you know, what they're doing. So we talked about just a moment ago, we talked about in the enlightenment, we talked about the purpose of life, you know, is experience and a few other things. But why? Why do I want to do any of these things? And some people think about it in terms of, you know, you want to raise your chakras. You want to start astral traveling. You know, you want to open your third eye. And these are, I think, fascinating things to do, which happen naturally in the process. But at the core of it, it's not about any of these things from way I see it. The real value from spirituality comes from the fact that it allows you to live your life to the fullest. If you're truly harnessing your meditations, if you're truly harnessing the wisdom, the knowledge that you, your awareness of self brings, what it gives you is the freedom to live your life as you want. Now, why, do we, why do we not live our life to the fullest sometimes? It's usually because of things like fear. It's almost always, in fact, some form of fear insecurities, anxieties, worries, things that stop us or make us second guess ourselves from following our heart, following our passion, as many people talked about. So as you uncover the true version of yourself in your spiritual journey, the real benefit comes from applying that in your materialistic life because you realize you don't have to compromise. You don't have to give up in situations because you actually do have the power to create whatever version of your life that you want. And that's incredibly liberating. The more you can take those learnings from your spiritual path and apply that, I guarantee not only are you going to start living a happier, more fulfilling life, people around you are going to start asking, you know, why, why do you never get stressed out when there's an exam coming up? Why are you happy all the time? Why are you always smiling? You know, how did you take that so easily? And each of us have different adversities. Life isn't easy. That's the easiest, probably the most certain thing I think we can all agree upon. You know, some people think spirituality is becoming, getting to a place where you're so zen that it doesn't matter what happens, everything's good. And bad stuff stops happening to you. And the reality is that's not the case at all. Because life, the things that we call bad are not really bad things. Failing exams is not a bad thing. You know, a simple exam, example is, let's take crashing a car. Right? If I ask you, is crashing a car a bad thing? Most people are like, yeah, I would describe that as a bad situation. I, if with no other context, I told you somebody crashed their car, you'd be like, yep, that is a bad thing. But if I change that story and I say, okay, somebody crashed their car, but in insurance, they got $10 million. Now, suddenly it's a good thing, right? So a small car crash, as long as nobody was hurt, if I get paid $10 million, I would consider that as a good thing. And notice as I change the story and I add a different element to the story, the thing that you thought is bad in one context starts becoming good in another. Why, why we talk about that is as you go through these experiences, these good and bad occurrences are continuously going to happen in life because that's what makes life rich and diverse. You're going to have ups and you're going to have downs. But through our spiritual journey, what we're really trying to do is allow ourselves to experience those ups as much as possible while not getting pulled down and not feeling like our life has ended or we've come to a point of no return when we do face those adversities. You know, the most foolish thing you can probably do in life I can probably, I think is quite relevant to where you all are right now is hoping that bad things won't happen. 
especially where you are now, I encourage you to take risks. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. But the more risks you take, the more you start living the fullest version of yourself, you're going to face a lot of adversities. You're going to face challenges. But that's what makes life fun. And what our spiritual journey gives us is the strength to face those adversities. You know, we become stronger internally. And we can take on challenges that other people would shy away from. And that, to me, is really that combination of bringing that spiritual and that materialistic world together. The other avenue that I think is quite beautiful for each of us here today, you know, you're all the leaders of tomorrow. The fact that you're here, you're having these conversations with yourself, with your family, with your friends, shows the level of self-awareness you have. And whether you like it or not, people are going to start looking to you for guidance. People will start looking to you as an inspiration when they start seeing that, hey, the way this person lives their life, you know, they don't, they don't get worried by things that are going on. They're always positive. They're enjoying their life to the fullest. I would like to live my life like that too. And if you can keep one foot in each world, you're going to be able to inspire people on both sides to make the fullest of their life experience. You're going to help people who are so lost in that materialistic world to take some of that wisdom from the spiritual world as well and become a more fuller version of themselves. And at the same time, some people who I think are too reclusive in their spiritual lives forget that the point of life is to experience the world. And it's not something to shy away from. There's no good or bad things in the materialistic world. So with that background, I want to talk a bit more now about how do we uncover that divinity that we have within ourselves. And there's a quote here that I want to share that's quite close to my heart, something that connected with me deeply as I was a child. And I'll just read it all for you now. So our greatest fear is not that we are inadequate, but that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, handsome, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were born to make manifest the glory of God within us. It is not just in some, it is in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we consciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our fear, our presence automatically liberates others. This is a lovely quote. And I think it encapsulates a lot of what many of you might be going through or will go through as those future leaders. It's as you start to uncover the beauty in life. I remember back in my you know, high school years as well, this constant question that I didn't want to feel out of place because high school is a situation in which you have to conform. It feels like everybody is doing the same thing. You know, there's things that are considered cool and there are things that are considered not cool. And it's a very unique part of life because I guarantee you, as soon as you get to college, everything changes. People celebrate how different people are. Yet, in this phase of your life, a lot of people don't like to share the things that make us great, the things that make us special. The wisdom that you're acquiring through your spiritual journey, the ways meditation is helping you. A lot of times we feel embarrassed to share that because, you know, we're worried does it does that make us sound like we think we're better than other people? And the reason I love this quote is it's all about the fact that you should never, you should never feel bad for the fact that there's something good, something special about you. And the more you can embrace how special you are and share that with other people without being afraid that they'll judge you for it, you're actually going to help them live their best version. You know, as the last line says, as we let our own light shine. We consciously give other people the permission to do the same. You know, as you guys keep uncovering the beauty within your own lives, you'll see around you, your friends will start having conversations with you. They will start living a more confident life. They will start living a happier life. So I implore you all to remind yourself of the beauty within and not hold that back.
So when we start connecting with our divinity and we start wanting to uncover, you know, we talked about enlightenment being uncovering that true self. In my experience, there are two equally important paths that you need to walk to realize that true self. And the first is surrender, learning to surrender, what does surrender mean and how to do that. And the second is manifestation. And they're both equally important. So a lot of times, and many spiritual books and people who give talks, I think, on spirituality and self-development, there's a lot of emphasis on one or the other. A lot of people will talk about the fact that you just need to have faith. You need to trust in the universe. Believe everything will be okay and it will be okay. And it's not wrong by any means. But surrender alone is not going to help you uncover that true divinity within you. Because as we've talked about, how do you expand your awareness? Through experience. So if you've never experienced the magic within you, if you've never experienced you creating a miracle, you've never experienced that, how are you going to truly believe and know that you have that ability within you? Surrendering from a place because you have no other options isn't even a true surrender. So when we talk about surrendering, for example, people will face a struggle in their life. It might be academics, it might be job related, it might be with your friends, it might be their family. And you'll think like, there's nothing I can do with the situation. I'm powerless. So you know what? I'm just going to accept things as they are. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you have to ask yourself, are you surrendering because you're truly happy and you've come to terms with the situation at hand? Or are you surrendering because you feel like you have another, no other option. And if it's the second one, then really you're not surrendering. You're, what you're doing is giving up in many ways. So what I consider a surrender is somebody who has the power to do something and chooses not to. That is real surrender. Because you're surrendering, not because you have to, but because you can and you've, you're fine with it. You're surrendering from a place of strength, not from a place of weakness. So how do you start to surrender from a place of strength? You do that by learning to manifest at the same time. What's manifestation about? Manifestation is about practicing, implementing a way of life in which you can bring about any reality that you want. And that is what helps you realize how unlimited you are. Each time you manifest something, whether small or big, you reinforce yourself, I do have the ability to create whatever reality I want. Some of you may know this already, and you're blessed. Some of you may have read about this in books, you might have heard about it from people. But until you start practicing it and implementing it, I find it's, it's one of those things that direct experience is the best teacher. And the best way to realize how unlimited you are, to realize that universal consciousness that's flowing within you. But then again, as I said, they're both equal. So it's not like manifestation is better than surrender. Because what ends up happening after a while is once you start to truly uncover that power within you, that you can create whatever reality you want, you actually realize, you know, the whole circle comes back again to the beginning that I can manifest anything I want, but actually I would rather surrender and let the universe throw whatever it wants to at me because whatever I'm going to manifest is actually not going to be as good. With my limited consciousness, I'm actually going to manifest a worse reality than the universal consciousness was going to give me. And in many ways, life gets boring when you can start creating anything you want with a drop of a hat. And then we actually start craving the challenge again. We start craving new experiences where we're not so powerful. And you might be surprised going, if I could create whatever reality I wanted, you know, why, would I, why would I give that up? Why would I surrender? And the best example I gave earlier this morning as well, uh, which I think hopefully will relate to a lot of you, is video games. So 
hoping a lot of you guys here can relate to playing video games. But when you're playing a video game, right, you start and the fun of it is the journey of leveling up your character, learning new skills, making your character more and more powerful. And that's where the fun is. That's why you spend countless days, weeks playing that game because you're enjoying the experience of unlocking new things, of getting better and better. And that journey is the fun. It's not making your character the most powerful. It's the journey of doing it and playing the game. Because what ends up happening is eventually you get to a situation where your character is so powerful You've unlocked all the skills in the game. You've done all the missions there are to do. And now it's got to a point where it's so simple. Your character is too powerful for the game that it's boring. If you can defeat every enemy in one second, then there's no challenge. And what do you do? I'm assuming most of you guys probably don't keep playing that game because it gets boring. What you do is you go and buy a new game where you can start again from the beginning with an, a weak character that has no skills and you want to go through the journey. And that is exactly how life and our soul works. Because before we come into this body, we are all powerful already. We realize the power we have. We are that unlimited universal consciousness. Anything you want, you think you have it, you become it in an instant. So what do you start wanting? Nothing. If you can have anything you want with a drop of a hat, and you've done that and experienced that a million times, after a while, your desires are gone. And you get to a point where like, okay, I, this isn't fun. This is not fulfilling. And that's when we go back to surrender, which is what makes life beautiful is the challenges, is the, is the adversities that we face, the ups and the downs. And that's why each of these fears are equally important to realize that true self. You need to learn to surrender and how to surrender and connect with the universe is probably a better way to put it. It's not really giving up. It's connecting with the universe and trusting in that universe. And at the same time, you need to learn how to take control of your consciousness and direct your consciousness through the universe to create those realities. And as you learn to master both of those sides of life, that's when you start to uncover your true self and you start to live. I think quite a happy, fulfilling life. So let's talk about the first. How do we surrender? What are some of the principles we can apply in our day-to-day -day life to be more connected with the universe? And if we talk about the challenges of our life, right? So I'll, I'll give a few examples, but we can probably start with you know, academics. If you want to do well on a test, or it might not even be a test, it might be there's a sports competition that's coming up, maybe there's a play coming up and you want to actually you know, be an actor in that, we often doubt ourselves because other people around us doubt ourselves. Or maybe they don't even say anything, but we think, oh, what will this person think about me if I try to do that? You know, who am I to go for this goal? The other thing that we do is we catastrophize. So when things go badly, we feel like it's the end of the world. Like if you try, let's say there's a goal that you wanted to be selected for a sports team and you try once and you get rejected, you're like, that's it. I've got no chance. I put so much hard work into doing this. And it could be a test as well. You study very hard for your test and you get a bad result. And you're like, that's it. You know, this was so important. I had to do really well in this test or I couldn't get into this course next year or I wouldn't have got this award. And you feel like it's the end of the world. And that stops us from having the ability to go back again, try again, and allow that divinity, give itself time to apply itself in the world. The first tool that you have to overcoming that is being the observer. So what being the observer is, is taking a step back where you're not dictating. You're not living the life as if everything is on the line. The best example uh, analogy for you guys to think about is imagine you're giving advice to your best friend. So if your best friend fails their test and they're very upset about it, they're like, I don't know what I can tell my parents. You know, I put in so much effort. Uh, this is the end of the world. I'm never going to get into the degree that I want, blah, blah, blah. Because you're your best friend, you care about them, right? So you're not just going to be like, go away, I don't care. 
you care about them, so you're going to give them advice. But at the same time, you don't care about them enough that you're going to go and break your head at home for the next three weeks. Like you're upset because you care about them, but you only get upset a little bit because you're an observer. It's not your experience, it's your friend's experience. And that level of being the observer is what we want to bring into each of our lives. As we start applying it, we get better and better at doing it, but it is honestly one of the greatest skills that you have. When we go through challenges, our mind, our conscious mind, doesn't let us apply our divinity, doesn't let us keep going with the task at hand. And to go beyond our mind, we need to become the observer. We take a step back and we view it going, okay, this is bad, but what could I do to rectify it? Because sitting here crying about it is not going to help me. The same way you'd probably tell your friends, sitting here crying about it is not probably going to help you. Let's see what we can do. But when it's you're in the middle of the situation, it feels hard to actually provide that advice to yourself, provide that feedback. So as you learn to step back and be the observer in your own life, you'll start to surrender a little bit more to the situation and then take the actions and the steps that you need to. The next aspect is focusing on the task at hand and not the outcome. The quickest way we start killing our divinity is by telling us, telling ourselves over and over again, we can't do something. Because I tried to do it last time and it didn't work. And we're putting all these negative thoughts out there so that next time I try and manifest something, it's not going to happen because in the back of your head, you're like, yes, but I did that last time and it didn't work. So even if you try and convince yourself, you have these deep subconscious thoughts. And we want to stop that. We want to stop those, my, those mental um, plays that are making yourself doubt our divinity. And the way we can do that is by focusing on the task. Your job, if it's a test coming up, your job is to study, to create a plan of action. If it's a competition coming up on the weekend, your job is to practice. If things go outside of your control, if the end result goes outside of your control, that's not your problem because you've done everything you can. And maybe it wasn't meant to be. And this is where surrender comes in. You need to trust and surrender that the universe has a plan. There's a reason why this thing hasn't worked the way it has. And the more we learn to trust in that universe, we can focus on, okay, I did everything I could, so it's not my fault. And it's unfortunate that things didn't go that way, but that allows you to pick yourself up and try again and try again. And if you do that enough times, that is really the secret to success. The difference between people who manifest the things they want in their life and the people who don't, more often than not, is resilience and perseverance. When we talk about spirituality and manifesting, this is the thing that people skip over. The miracles that we create are not actually that crazy of a miracle. It's the fact that you believe yourself enough that you will try and you will try and you will try enough times until the thing that you want happens. Whereas other people don't believe in themselves enough, so they'll give up after the first or second. Such a simple principle, but a lot of people don't realize it and don't apply it. I'll give you guys an analogy. Have you guys seen the movie Now You See Me? It's a movie about magicians, modern, modern day magicians. So for context, in that movie, there's a beautiful example in terms of the power of the mind and the power of perseverance. There's a magician and he explains how he pulls off the craziest magic trick in the world. And what the magic trick was is he goes to a group of people in an audience and he asks them to pick a card. And somebody picks the card and he goes, I want you to sign your name on this card. And he signs his name. And then he puts the card, he tears it up. And what he ends up doing as the big reveal, there's a big, big oak tree next to him. And he gets a chainsaw or an axe, or they describe it in the movie, and he cuts open that tree all in real time. And inside this tree, Inside that tree is a glass box, and inside that glass box is a card, and on that card is the same signature that this person did. And if you listen to that, 
it feels truly like magic. If you just think for a moment, how, what other explanation is there for the fact that there's this card inside a tree that this person just signed, if not magic? And when he explains how he just does that trick, how he created magic, the answer was persistence and perseverance. And what this person had done is 20 years ago, he followed this person on the day they started their work, got them to sign a card, put that card in a box, put that box in a tree while the tree was still young, followed that person to and from work for 20 years, and on retirement day, found him again, made it look random, picked him from the crowd, got him to sign his same signature again. And this person forgotten that 20 years ago he'd signed this card. But when he puts it all together, it's just beyond the level of dedication that any person would expect. And that's why it feels like a miracle, like a magic. And that's the reality of life. It's these things that we call miracles are simply things that if you care about them enough, if you believe in yourself enough and you're willing to go above and beyond what other people would, you're going to start creating miracles in your life. But you're not going to be able to do that if you don't believe it's possible, because you know, imagine this person who created that magic trick. He had to follow this person for 20 years. Now, if he, think, if he thought that trick was not gonna be successful, he would have given up after a week or two weeks because he's like, it's not worth it. I'm gonna put all this effort and it's gonna be a waste. So uncovering your divinity is more about believing in yourself and trusting that it's gonna happen and then just focusing on what you need to do. You're not worrying about how it's going to play out. You trust that it's going to work and just do more and more above and beyond what other people would. The other next principle is about being present. We spend a lot of time worrying about things that have already happened or things that are yet to happen. And that stops us from living today, from applying ourselves today. I have a strong philosophy of never live your life with regret. If you're making a decision in your life, analyze it with the knowledge that you have. But tomorrow, it may feel like you made a bad decision because you have some new information and things didn't go the way that you wanted. But the reality is, at the time you made that choice, you made the best choice available to you. And there's no point about worrying about it because even if you went back in time, if you didn't have that new information, you would never have made a different decision. So. Don't worry about the things that have already happened. Give yourself credit that you made the best choice available for you at the time. And if things don't go well, things don't go well, there'll always be another opportunity. But you have two options, right? You can either sit there worrying about something that's happened that you can't change and ruin your present. Or you can acknowledge that, okay, this has happened. I can't change it, but I'm not also going to ruin my present today. And a lot of people feel like they have to, like, let's say you fail a test. A lot of people feel that I have to feel bad. You know, if I don't feel bad, that means I didn't care and I'm not taking it seriously. And that's not the case at all, right? You don't have to beat yourself up. You don't have to be negative with, if you're trying to learn and uncover. And there are two separate aspects. One is what can I learn from the situation so I can improve next time? And the next is how do I want to make my present? How do I want to make my emotional state now? And I strongly implore you all, don't let what's happened affect your present. Good or bad, it doesn't make a difference because it's happened, I can't change it. And if something's yet to happen, well, you can still change it. And the things that you're worried about may never happen. You know, it doesn't make sense to spend the next three years worrying about how your year 12 results could be, that you're not gonna do well, what's gonna happen to your life after that? Because what happens when you get there and you actually have done fine all along? You've just wasted three years of your life stressing, creating an unhappy present. And this is why we talk about broadening your perspective. What truly matters in life? Now, right now, when things go bad, it feels like that is the only thing that matters. This test is the only thing that matters. This friend is the only friend that matters. You know, this sports competition is the only thing that matters. But as you start to broaden your perspective, as you start to realize that this one experience, it doesn't really matter whether it went good or bad. 
I'm not even going to care about it in six months' time. I'm not going to care about it in one year's time. It allows you to move forward and continue to have new experiences, not getting caught up in the old experiences. It allows you to also realize the purpose of life as we talked about, right? At the end of the day, the real thing we're here to do is be happy. We're here to be happy, to live the fullest version of self. And to do that, if, you know, why am I studying? Why am I getting a job? Do you have a question? Sorry, the mic was on for a moment. As we're doing this, we start to implement a, a self, a, uh, sorry, a process of introspection where we start asking ourselves, okay, why am I studying? I'm studying so I can get a job. Why do I want a job? I'm trying to get a job so I can earn money. Why do I want money? So I can live a comfortable life, so I can be happy. And it doesn't matter which question you ask, almost every answer is going to end up with something along the lines of, I want to feel happy. I want to feel filled. I want to feel loved, whatever it might be. If you can broaden your perspective and realize the thing that I'm worrying about, for example, an exam, at the end of the day, all of that is so one day I can be happy. You realize how silly it is to be unhappy today about that. Because the very reason you're trying so hard in this exam is not for marks, because marks are meaningless. It's not for a job. It's not for money. If you keep following it through, it's so eventually you can be happy. It's silly. And it's, you know, you're going against your own purpose by being unhappy now. And remind yourself that anytime you feel like life has gotten out of your hands, that, you know, there is something that's occupying the mental faculties. Remind yourself, why? Is it worth it? Am I denying myself the thing that really matters? And that's that whole broadening our perspective. And then finally, we have love life. The simplest way to surrender is by having unconditional love to all aspects of your life. Unconditionally loving yourself to start with. Everything starts here. Now, if you want to change the world, start by changing yourself. If you become the best version of yourself and you live that, you don't need to do anything else. That in itself is enough to inspire 100 people around you. And those people will inspire 100 people, other people around them. That's all you need to do. And you start there by loving yourself. By loving yourself for who you are. Because you are part of the universal consciousness. consciousness. You're perfect. Start appreciating every part about your being, your essence. And that gives you permission to make mistakes. It gives you permission to take risks because you know things will be fine. You're a beautiful soul. You can't make mistakes. And the more you start loving yourself, you start forgiving yourself, you're going to be more empowered to take those risks, to follow your passions that we talked about earlier. And then you start spreading that unconditional love to your family, to your friends, to the things that we do in our life. And as we start doing that, we start having more trust, trust in the universe about ourselves. And we have the ability to surrender and believe things will work out. It might, I might not be able to see how they will work out, but if I trust enough times, you'll start to see those connections and that will give you the power to surrender. Let's turn to the other aspect now, which is about manifestation. So to manifest, the first thing we need to do is get rid of all the insecurities and all the fear. Because the mind doesn't know I want versus I don't want. Your consciousness doesn't know I want versus I don't want. All it knows is what are you thinking about? What are you attracting? You might have heard of this as the law of attraction. There's many different ways it's described. But the idea is if your mind is telling you over and over again that you can't do this, you're not going to win that competition. You're not going to get a good result in your test. You're not going to be a good singer. Then that is what is going out to the universe. That is the signal that's going out. And I'm not just talking about in the universe. I'm saying physiologically in terms of your body and your actions. You follow that with like-minded thought. 
Let me give you an example. So we do a lot of coaching. Um, you should spend time coaching thousands of students over the years who are going through college exams, et cetera, high school exams. And we noticed a very interesting trend, which is that we had two students. And if one student comes in and they believe in themselves and they, because maybe because they've done well in the past, or maybe simply because they believe, they expect I'm going to get 100% on this test. And another person comes in and they think, I think the most I can get is 60%. I don't, I've never got higher than that before. I don't think I can get higher than that before, even if I try hard. And both of these students do a test and they both get 80%. What happens next is really interesting. The person who got 100%, who thought they were going to get 100%, but got 80%, because they thought they were going to be here and they believe that they are here, when they get a result that's lower than that, immediately their mind starts asking, what could I do to improve? How could I get there next time? What did I miss? And they start planning and creating system of action so next time they don't miss that because they believe deep down, I shouldn't have missed that last time. Whereas the other person effectively feels that when I go through this process, I'm happy. The fact that I got, you know, 80% is more than I ever could and I don't need to do anything. So what ends up happening is when I come to the next test, they actually, the guy who got, who thought he was only getting 60% and got 80% stays at that level because he hasn't put any time or effort into improving. Whereas on the other hand, the person who applied themselves and try to close those gaps gets better and better and better because they believe. And this applies outside academics. You know, take the Australian Open is happening here this week. I'm a big tennis fan. So imagine somebody's playing Roger Federer. If you're a 19-year-old person playing your first Grand Slam tennis match in the Australian Open and you lose against Roger Federer, you're probably going, yep, I couldn't have beaten him anyway. There's nothing I could have done. So next match, you're probably not going to improve that much. On the other hand, if Roger Federer loses even one point to you, he's going to be thinking, how did I give up a point so easily? I'm the world champion. I shouldn't have done that. And he's going to make sure he improves. So the start of any manifestation comes from eliminating any negative thoughts because you need to find that belief. And not just belief, you need to know it. So each of you are sitting here on a chair. And I'll just explain the difference between knowledge and belief. So belief is, I believe that I can do this, but you don't quite know. Whereas, you know, if I ask you, there's a chair below you. Do you believe there's a chair below you? Or do you know there's a chair below you without even looking, right? Intuitively, most of you probably should, hopefully all of you will say that I know there's a chair. You don't hope, you're not believing there's a chair. You, you know it from the deepest level of your essence. And that is the same level of conviction you need to have. You don't want to believe that you can do well. You don't want to believe that I'm going to do a good on my test, that I believe I'm going to do well on this uh, competition that I'm doing. You have to know it. And you get to that point by eliminating, eliminating those doubts, those fears, because when we're all born, we, we are born into this world full of potential, full of self-belief, full of happiness. And it's the experiences in our life. You know, maybe you failed a test. Until you failed that test, you thought you could do great on every test. And then you suddenly fail one test, maybe in grade three. And you start doubting yourself. Or maybe your friend goes, oh, you're not that smart. You're not going to do well. And because he said that, you start doubting yourself. So if you can start peeling away these layers, you can go back to that, that core self who knows that you're capable of anything. And that's the the first foundation of manifestation. And this is where daily meditation comes in. The more you practice meditation, the more you're going to be able to peel off these layers. We're not going to let our mind and our doubts run our, through our minds. We're going to be able to take those off and start implementing and manifesting. The second thing we should start doing is showing gratitude. Gratitude for the miracles you've already created in your life. You might not even realize it, but tomorrow morning when you wake up, I want you all to think about what are the things that you love in your life? And you'll realize 
even if you didn't know it till now, you've actually manifested each of these things. So show some love, show some gratitude for each of those things and acknowledge that power within you that's manifested all these things without you realizing it. Because the more you can acknowledge that manifestation, the more you're going to realize you're capable, which is only going to reinforce your belief, not your belief, sorry, your knowledge that you can do what you want. The next aspect is televisualization. Why we say televisualization is it's not just about visualizing what you want. You have to feel it. You have to involve as many of your senses as you can. And the most important is your feeling. So if you want to do really well in an exam, don't just visualize I've got 100% of my score. I want you guys to sit there and spend time going, okay, I'm walking out of the exam room. I've got my test. It says 100%. How am I feeling? Maybe there's a competition I've won. I'm being awarded a trophy. How am I feeling? Am I celebrating? Am I happy? Do I want to scream? Do I want to share this news to my family? Those feelings that you can replicate allow you to trick your subconscious because your subconscious doesn't know the difference between reality and imagination. And there's been numerous actually psychology studies done on this, that if you can trick yourself enough times and you do that through emotion, you know, all our memories are stored through emotion. Then your mind starts be truly believing and expecting you to do well. If you spend every morning for the next three months visualizing, televisualizing that you've done well on an exam, that you've got 100% and seeing how you feel, then your mind thinks that when you do an exam, you should do well because every time I did those fake exams in my head, I've done really well and I felt good about it. And you can trick yourself into believing and unlocking that full power that's within you. The last two here are all about following that up with action. Because manifestation is not simply about closing your eyes, clicking your fingers, and having something appear in front of you. There are people out there who probably can do those things. But the, the reality is, for most of us, the real manifestation, if you truly believe something, then you should follow that up with your body and your actions. So if you truly believe that you are going to become the greatest cricket player in the world, if you believe that and you know that, then you should be spending every weekend practicing because why would you give up such a great, if you know that if I spend one hour every day practicing cricket, I'm going to become the next Virat Kohli. Why are you not spending the time? The only reason you wouldn't spend the time is if you didn't believe it because you're like, oh, there's no point. Even if I spend it, it's going to be a waste of time because I'm never going to be selected for my school team. I'll never be selected for the district team. And that doubt stops you from spending the time. If you truly believe something, then follow it up with action. And that will help reinforce that you do believe it. And that's how we create miracles. As I talked to you about earlier, the miracles in our lives are created because we go to the lengths that other people wouldn't. Other people give up after one negative experience and they go there's no point of trying this let me find a new goal i don't think i can do this whereas because we realize the divinity within ourselves, we know if i want something i can get anything done and we persevere till we make it happen because we know it's going to happen there's no other way about it if you want something it will happen but you need to believe that and follow that with your actions and lastly as we talked about earlier those twin parts the more you practice manifestation, the more you should also be practicing surrender and trust. Build that connection with the universe. Learn to realize that you might have put a lot of effort and things might not have gone the right way, but there's actually a reason for that. Because that thing that you thought you wanted wasn't actually the best way to get you to your goal. And you might not realize that now. You might not realize that for many years. But I know in my own life, so many times I put effort in for something and I didn't get the result I wanted. And at the time, you know, the instinct was to feel like, oh, that was such a waste. But now, in hindsight, I can see every situation that I thought was a failure at the time actually was the perfect stepping stone to become who I am today, to give me the experiences that I needed to become who I am today. And it's hard to see that. And you might never see that for a while, but that's where the surrender and the trust comes in. Do everything that you need to do, but then believe 
and know that the universe will work out so you can keep trying and keep doing the things that you need. The last thing I'll mention is take, a, take accountability for your life. If you want to start realizing how powerful you are, start acknowledging that everything around you is your fault. Not in a negative way, but in the sense that, you know, it's a small trick that I started doing, but um, I started realizing it's okay to say sorry for things. Not because you feel guilty about it, but because you're saying, yes, this happened because of me. I am the creator. I created everything around here and I'm taking responsibility for these things that have happened around me. No situation in your life is thrust upon you. And the more you start realizing good or bad, remember, you have to take both because if you start taking one or the other, what you're saying is I only create some examples in my life. Somebody else is creating other examples for me. We don't want that. We want you to realize that everything in your life is created by you. So start acknowledging and taking accountability for everything that happens in your life, good and bad. You don't have to feel guilty. You know, as we talked about earlier, there's a separation between feeling bad about something and taking accountability for something. If you can apply these principles that we've talked about today, I'm sure each of you will be able to apply, manifest, and uncover that divinity within you a bit more. I'll end it on that point, and I just wanted to throw it open to you all now. I'm happy to take any questions about uh, anything we've talked about today or broader as well. Um, feel free to message in the chat or put your hands up on, uh, click the raise hand button. I'm more than happy to take those questions now. Thanks, guys. Hello, Nikhil, sir. It's a wonderful session today. Thanks very much. It's a pleasure yeah. to join you all here. And children, anybody wants to ask any questions about today's session, you can raise your hands and Nikhil, sir, is here to answer all your questions. Feel free to ask any questions. Please raise your hand or if you want to type, please put it your questions in the chat windows. And then and if anybody wants to share that experience, also you can share it. Aditi raised her hand. Yes, yes. I'm just. Hello. Am I audible? Hi, Aditi. How are you? I'm fine, sir. How are you? Good, thanks. Um, I actually had a question. Uh, before that, you know, your session was really nice, and you told us not to give up. It actually, even I had, uh, you know, I actually like drawing uh, mangas and all. And I always used to think that uh, I cannot do this. It's too tough. And when I started trying it, it really came out well. You know what you told me? That it, uh, we can, uh, uh, you know, try something even though we don't know. We might fail many times, but we still can do. Yeah. So, so as I told, uh, my, it's my hobby. My drawing is my hobby. And, uh, no, Lovely. It, yeah, in meditation, I always, uh, you know, get, uh, I'll always be standing in a warrior pose and, you know, flowing in patterns, you know, in mandala patterns around us. So oh, beautiful. I didn't understand. It always appears. I don't understand what it means. 
you're having these visions that keep coming back yeah and you know that uh, she's like ha- half her side is full of light and other yeah. half of her side is uh, burning of fire so i really did understand what was going on that's incredibly beautiful the way you've described it um, in fact the fact you said you're you're uh, you like to draw so i'm assuming you've probably done some great drawings of that too um i think that's honestly incredibly fascinating and i encourage you to explore that further long story short you might not like my answer but i don't like to interpret other people's visions because the reality is the vision that has come to you is come in a form that makes sense for you. you know, we think about it what what's really coming to us is energies. And those energies manifest in a particular way. So the a good example that you'll hear is Christians will always see visions about Jesus. Hindus will always see visions about Krishna or Rama. And the reason for that is that energy manifests in a way that makes sense for that person. So I would encourage you to introspect and spend some time actually you know figuring out what does this mean what is this warrior pose that's going on what is this mandala that i'm seeing because whatever answer i tell you will be honestly wrong because i will be putting my experience onto that vision but that vision didn't come to me it came to you and i think i'll probably say this as well um a lot of people will want to interpret those visions for you which sometimes is great because i know that in fact i've had some visions of my own and i was always curious what does this mean what is it saying but i would encourage you not to let other people interpret your visions the reason i say that is the moment i say something i start limiting your understanding of self because let's say i t- i could say that vision tells you that you're going to become a great accountant i'm just making this up or maybe that vision says that you're going to have a car crash next week right i could interpret that in any way but the moment i say it some doubt will come in your mind going maybe he's right maybe that's the thing that the vision means and whether or not that's true because you're you start thinking about it it will become true so my strong encouragement is feel free to share your visions i think is beautiful i love hearing about this stuff but whether it's myself or anybody else do not give the opportunity to somebody to put that thought into your mind let yourself be unlimited let you decide for yourself what you want that vision to mean what you think it means and the one tip or recommendation i can give you um is to keep a diary or a journal so um you draw so hopefully you're taking lots of these pictures down as you go along but the other one is not just to see about what you're seeing but ask yourself how do you feel when those visions are coming because sometimes they communicate on the emotional level too and the more you spend that time you keep some sort of journal they might the different pieces might start to fit together and you might be able to interpret why did yeah. i have this vision now thank you very beautiful thank you thank you everybody Do we have any more questions? I think nobody has raised hand, Nikhil sir, as of now. Okay. Let's give it another moment. Okay. Is there any last questions? last thing i'll just share with each of you is as you think about what you're taking away from the session on each of those aspects of learning to surrender and learning to manifest i encourage you all to push your understanding of self a little bit further what you thought was possible yesterday in one sphere of your life challenged that broaden that perspective i had a beautiful question in the morning session that i'll 
answer again here because I think it's quite relevant to uh, a lot of you as well. My question was, sometimes I get like small desires, instant gratification. How do I know like what's worth manifesting and what's not? You know, sometimes I might want to manifest, uh, I want a chocolate bar to come or, you know, something small that feels petty versus something bigger. And I think you're going to find a lot of you are probably quite curious as well. And the desires that we have don't have to be these noble, grandiose, I have to become enlightened, I have to save the world. Your desires can be anything. There's no such thing as a good or bad manifestation. Why I say this is the goal that I want each of you to practice and implement is uncovering that divinity, realizing that you have the ability to manifest anything. And in that process, if you, you know, one easy way to connect with that reality is by manifesting these small instant gratifications. Maybe you want a good result on the test that's coming up on Monday. It's very personal, it's selfish, it doesn't matter. Maybe you want to have a new PS5. Maybe you want something else. These might seem petty and instant gratification desires, but start with something. It could be anything you want. And as you learn to manifest these things and you realize, actually, I can do this. It's going to do two things. One, it's going to help you realize that divinity and that feedback loop, that belief in yourself is only going to go up because you prove it to yourself time and time again. And eventually, you're going to realize what actually matters. For example, you'll manifest a good test result. You're like, I got that, but actually, it didn't make me feel how I thought it would make me feel. So next time, you're going to figure out something else. But you're not going to know that because I tell you or your parents tell you. You're going to know that because you tried it and you realize actually it wasn't worth the effort. So let me try and manifest something else that might give me what I want, which is that happiness, that fulfillment. I'll leave it there um, as well. We have one question in the chat. Awesome. So the question is, does vision open the third eye and help us in life? Srihita, can you just clarify what do you mean by does vision open the third eye? Yeah. Mom, uh, sir, actually, I have like visions when I sleep or like... Uh, when I sleep or like do meditation, like it moves in a circle or it just comes like a curve, etc. So wonderful. And your question? So these visions, does it open the third eye or does it help in life or does it want to communicate with us or something? Great question. So the question was, do, do these visions that, um, this girl is having at the moment, do they help us with life and do they help us with opening the third eye? The, it's actually the other way around. So you're having these visions because your third eye is open, if that makes sense. So it's not necessarily the visions are opening the third eye. As your third eye starts opening, you start having visions. And the fact that you're having visions is a byproduct of the fact that you are activating those chakras. You are slowly opening those third eyes. Does it help us in life? That's a good question. Um, everything helps us in life, depending on how we want to use it. So I'll give you two parts of that answer. Part one, which is, I think the third eye is fascinating. I remember when I was your age, I was incredibly, incredibly fascinated by some of the visions, et cetera, that I was having as well. And I encourage you strongly to play with that, explore that because it's, it's fun, it's fascinating, it's interesting, and it helps you uncover a part of your divinity. The third eye is part of who you are. So the more you can experience that, you'll start to realize there is more to me than this physical body. And I'm so happy for you that you are starting to see that already. But at the same time, for people out there who are not having third eye visions, etc., cetera, um, the question was, does it help in life? And you, know, you don't need visions to help us with life because as we talked about, a lot of people, in fact, adults as well, get really focused on, I've been meditating for 10 years and I haven't had an astral travel experience. I've been meditating for 20 years and my third eye hasn't opened. And the reason is it doesn't have to, it doesn't need to because they don't directly always help us in life because what does help us in life is the realization of self. 
the confidence, the self-love, the resilience that we build. These are the things that directly help us in life. And if you're happier today than you were yesterday, if you're less stressed today than you were yesterday, then you're growing. But at the same time, the visions can help you. As you learn to connect more, and as I was just chatting before with other people, if you spend some time reflecting, understanding why are these visions coming, what is the universe trying to communicate with me? That's going to allow you to be more in tune with the universe. Instead of fighting the current, you're going to find it easier to surrender, like we talked about, because the, commu- the universe is directly communicating with you. And that's the way in which it can help you with life. So spend some time you know, making, making sense of what those visions are. And honestly, they might seem really blurry and fuzzy at the start, but the more you keep meditating and the longer uh, you entertain those, they will become clearer and clearer. And eventually you'll be able to connect those little dots there too. Great question. Hello, children. You have any more questions? I think no one Great. Has. Perfect. I think we can probably end it there. Thank you, children. Thanks again for your time. Appreciate it all. It was lovely speaking with all of you and I look forward to reconnecting with you again. Um, thanks again. Uh, and I'm hoping you're enjoying all these sessions being held by the Crystal Children Corner and connecting with that inner divinity and with each other in the process. So also wanted to thank everybody else who's been watching as well on this other stream. Thank um, you, Nikhil. It's a pleasure having you here too. Thank you, Nikhil. See here. Um, uh, whatever I heard from morning, by the time now the second section, I was totally clear. <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> Love this is the second section much. from you. I really great. I really connected for your you know experience and everything. Thanks for that. It's very nice to hear that from you. Thank you, children, for attending the session. Then see you next week, and have a wonderful meditation all week. Thank you, Nikhil, for attending this and making your time and spending with the children. Thank you. Thanks, Thank everybody. Then uh, ending the session. See the sir. Yeah, you can. Okay. Thank you, sir.